What's the first thing that comes to mind when you think self-help? Maybe it's a new diet trend or a motivational podcast or TED talk, a workout routine, or a bunch of best-selling books that went viral on TikTok. Whatever your answer is, the popularity of all of the above speaks volumes about the self-improvement craze that's been happening worldwide. And while it's certainly great that as a society, we have such a strong desire to better ourselves, make no mistake, there's a dark side to self-help too. Easy to miss and even easier to fall into. The self-help industry is also riddled with toxic positivity, phony gurus, and empty affirmations. So if you've been thinking of doing some self-improvement lately, watch this video before you do to avoid these potential problems. The psychological impact. The famous saying, too much of a good thing can be a bad thing, applies to self-help too. Best-selling author Mark Manson, who wrote the number one New York Times bestseller, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fmm, says that there are only two types of people who get hooked on self-help, the bad to okay and the okay to great. Bad to okay people seek self-help because they feel that something is fundamentally wrong with them. Okay to great people, on the other hand, are generally adequate, have good emotional adjustment and mental health, and want to use self-help to maximize all of these things and go from good to great. The problem is most of the self-help material out there is aimed more to the bad to okay people than the okay to great, but it's the former that ends up gaining more from it. Why? Because of the psychological impact of self-help on our self-esteem. Bad to okay people can feel inadequate, so their already low self-esteem starts dwindling. In the words of Mark Manson, the irony here is that the prerequisite for self-help to be effective is the one crucial thing that self-help cannot actually help. Accept yourself as a good person who makes mistakes. The questionable ethics. One reason why some people remain skeptical of self-help is that they believe that the industry mantra is a patient healed is a customer lost. And they're not entirely wrong about that. Self-help marketing has been criticized because it creates unrealistic expectations just to sell products that aren't even scientifically proven. Some so-called wellness experts and self-help gurus don't even practice what they preach, much less care enough if it's been proven to be true or not. The profit motive, however, shouldn't be so surprising given that the industry has now become worth billions of dollars. It made a total revenue of $17.29 billion in the last year alone according to recent statistics reported by John LaRosa, president of Market Data Statistics. Why? Because according to entrepreneur, psychologist, and hit author MJ DeMarco, the incentive is not on creating real change, but the illusion of it, a concept he calls action faking. See, the lure of self-development, DeMarco explains, is that it gets you hooked on the feeling of accomplishing something and motivating you to do more. But after a certain point, you'll most likely just end up relapsing and feeling frustrated with yourself again because there's always a new standard to reach, something you're doing wrong, or one more way you're not enough. At the end of the day, the more unhappy and disconnected you are with your life, the more the self-help industry stands to profit from you. How to avoid the downsides. Just to be clear, we're aware that the criticisms aren't true of the entire self-help industry. In fact, self-help can benefit us greatly if we know how to apply its teachings properly. According to a nonprofit mental health informational blog, Healthy Place, psychological self-help taught by legitimate sources can be incredibly beneficial. The potential of mental health self-help materials to make a positive difference in the lives of those suffering from mental illnesses is real, writes mental health journalist, Samantha Gluck. The challenge comes in choosing material that's authoritative, clearly written, and presented in a style that motivates you to do the work required to get better. Similarly, a study by psychologist Joanne Wood and her colleagues found that common self-help mantras, such as, I am a beautiful person, and I am capable of anything, only help people who already have high self-esteem and may make things worse for people with low self-esteem. The researchers believe this is because such unreasonably positive blanket statements may only remind them that they aren't measuring up to the standards they have for themselves. So they suggest using more specific and realistic positive statements like, I'm good at dot dot dot, to avoid worsening any feelings of inferiority. Self-help author and speaker Robert Ringer also said that those who stand to gain the most from self-help are those who are ready to apply it in their lives long-term, not those looking for a shortcut to motivation and happiness. He explains that we can never make any lasting or meaningful change in our lives as long as we hold on to the misguided belief 
that there's something about us that needs to be fixed or that there's a certain answer we're looking for. We need to understand that no one else can do the work of self-improvement for us and learn to listen to the quiet voice inside that says, this works for me, this is good for me. In the words of the former first lady of the United States, Rosalind Carter, once you accept the fact that you're not perfect, then you develop some confidence. That's why self-acceptance matters so much more than anything any book, podcast, or seminar can teach you. And it's the key to unlocking all the benefits self-help can give you. In the end, it's all about balance and finding the right sources that work for you. By being aware of the potential pitfalls and choosing reputable sources, you can make sure that your journey towards self-improvement is a positive one. What are your thoughts on this video? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and wanna see more like it, please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell to be notified when we drop new content. Are you looking for a cuddly companion that brings positivity and mental wellness to your daily life? Get your very own sigh. The lovable plushie is here to brighten your days. It embodies the spirit of Psych2Go and it serves as a reminder to prioritize your mental well-being. Its green leaf symbolizes growth, renewal, and the importance of self-care, whether it's for yourself or as a thoughtful gift for a loved one. Sai is ready to be your snuggly friend through all of life's ups and downs. Buy your Sai plushie today. Link is listed in the description box.